Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, previous lecture uh, we, we dedicated to uh, Hilbert spaces um, with uh, complex scalars. So basically we were talking about multiplication of some abstract vector by complex numbers. And um, that includes basically scalar product of uh, abstract vectors as well. But today I would like to concentrate a little bit more on multiplication of vector by a, a, a complex scalar and more precisely a two-dimensional vector something which we basically kind of used to have in most of the cases when we think about vectors we think about vectors on a plane so what does multiplication of the vector on the plane which is 2d two-dimensional vector what uh, happens if we multiply it by a complex scalar. Now this is lecture number 11 in the part called Vectors of the course Math Plus and Problems presented on Unisor.com. Um, so I suggest you to watch this lecture from the Unisor.com because every lecture has basically the video part, that's the one that you're watching right now, and uh, there is a textual part on the same web page of Unisor.com. And the textual part is like a textbook, so you can read the same material I'm presenting uh, in the video, you can read it in a textbook style description. And, well, sometimes I might miss something, well, happens. Anyway, so let's talk about multiplication of two-dimensional um, vector by a complex scalar. Well, first of all, we did know how to multiply vector by a real scalar. So if we multiply a vector by some factor, if you wish, it lengths actually be, it is extended or, or, or shrink, whatever. So if you have a two-dimensional vector like this, if you multiply it by number two, well, his length will be twice as big. If you multiply it by number minus one half, then the length will be half, and then it will be reverse um, as far as direction is, con is concerned. So basically all the multiplication uh, by real numbers are leaving the vector along the same line no matter what. So let's switch to complex number. First of all, how do we multiply vector by a complex number? Well, when we were multiplying by real number, we basically have defined first that multiplication by the real number means extending its length by the factor and take the sign into consideration. So we have to define the uh, multiplication of the vector by a complex number. How do we do it? Here is a very nice way. If you take any complex number a plus bi where A is the real part and BI is imaginary part. Now, you can always have a vector with coordinates AB and say that, well, this vector and this complex number are basically a representation of, well, more or less the same thing, and there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between all the vectors on the 2D on the two-dimensional plane, Euclidean space, two-dimensional Euclidean space, uh, and all the complex numbers. Because for every complex number, you have a certain vector, or for a certain vector, you have a corresponding complex number, with abscissa equals to real part, and ordinate equal to the um, imagined coefficient, coefficient at, at, at i. So, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence. So, what I'm suggesting is the following. How do we multiply a vector by a um, complex number? Well, first, if you have a vector with coordinates a, b, you think about the corresponding complex number, a plus b, i. And then, if you want to multiply it by some kind of a number, complex number z, so you multiply it by um, x plus uh, y, you do whatever is necessary to multiply two complex numbers which we know how to do it. Well, we have a distributive law 
so it's a times x is a x um, a times i is uh, i a y now b uh, i b x plus uh, b i and so it's i square b i equals to now i square is minus one right so it's i x minus b y as a real part and the imaginary part would be this so we have multiplied these two numbers now what i'm saying is okay fine so the result of multiplication of vector a b by complex number x plus i y would be a new vector with abscissa this this is uh, a x minus b y and ordinate will be this a y plus b x so that's a new vector so multiplication of this vector by this number is this vector with these coordinates that's it it's a definition now is it a good definition but well, obviously definition should be reasonable which means what we have certain laws for example we have laws of commutative law we have associative law we have distributive law etc etc question is if i define the multiplication of a vector by a number would that actually way of multiplication satisfy our rules so for example if i have different two numbers z1 and z2 i multiply by some kind of a vector uh, v now can i do it this way or can i do it this way and will result be the same um, now how about the associative law what if i have two different vectors I multiply z by v1 plus v2. Will it be equal to z times v1 plus z times v2? Question mark? Yes. The answer is yes. I mean, you can definitely check all these laws, all these rules, if you wish, because they are all uh, satisfied when, when you are multiplying complex numbers. So whenever you're basically mapping, so to speak, the uh, vectors into complex numbers vector a b into complex number a plus b i um, to basically make sure that the vector multiplication by complex number satisfies the rules you basically have to check if complex number multiplied by the same um, complex uh, um, multiplier would, would, would behave the same and we, knew, we do know that complex numbers arithmetic between complex numbers satisfies all these laws commutative distributive associative etc so basically we we proved that the vector multiplication by a complex number satisfies all the rules and well is that it basically i mean have we finished our work of describing how to multiply a vector by complex number well in a way we did finish however what i would like to know also is how geometrically a b is related to this a x minus uh, b y and a y plus b x what is geometrically means multiplication by complex number and that's what i'm going to explain right now because there is a very simple explanation what is this thing for real numbers when you multiply vector by real numbers it's basically stretching or shrinking the vector along the same line we know that how is it I mean that's the geometric uh, meaning of multiplication by a real number so now we are talking about geometric meaning of um, the vector by the geometric meaning of multiplication of vector by complex number now to do this I'm going to do the following look at this vector a and b let's say this angle is alpha and let's say the length of this vector is L then um, 
A is equal to L cosine alpha and, and uh, B is equal to L times sine alpha, right? Whatever the alpha is, if vector is this way, then the corresponding cosine or sine will be negative or positive, whatever. So everything is fine. This is a very nice kind of thing, N nice explanation what it is. All right, great. Which means that my corresponding complex number, which corresponds to this vector, can be expressed as L cosine alpha plus I sine alpha. Great. Okay, now, same thing with this particular uh, complex number. Now, the, if z is equal to x plus iy, I can put square root of x square plus y square, open parenthesis, x divided by this square root, plus iy divided by this square root, right? Now, obviously, I assume that um, x and y are not equal to zero because otherwise it would be kind of very simple thing. So we are not talking about multiplication by zero. So okay, so x plus s square plus y square is not equal to zero. Everything is fine. Now, if you have these two numbers, x divided by square root of uh, uh, x squared plus y squared and y divided. What do we know about these numbers? Well, first of all, each of them is between minus 1 and plus 1, right? Just because this is square root of x squared plus y squared, so it's definitely greater by absolute values than x. Same thing here. That's number 1. Number 2, we know that the sum of these squares is equal to 1, right? x squared plus y squared, uh, uh, the uh, square root of x bar plus y squared is equal to uh, 1, because it just will uh, cancel out. So, um, what we know about this is that if this is the something which we usually call the uh, absolute value of z, right? We can always say that um, my x divided by square root of x square plus y square is equal to cosine of some angle phi and y divided by the same square root is a sine of that thing. Indeed, if you will square root, if you will square this and square this, you will have x squared divided by x squared plus y squared and y squared divided by x squared plus y squared. So sum of them, which is cosine squared plus sine squared, is equal to 1. Now, how can we determine these angles, this angle phi, for example? Well, very, very simply. Let's forget about the sine of x or y. Let's consider them to be positive. Let's say x is a positive. Then I can always have something which is called arc sine arc sine of x divided by square root, right? Now, this would be some kind of an angle. Um, actually, I need for x, I need cosine, arc cosine, if you don't mind. So, um, this is my x divided by square root of square x square plus y square. And this is my phi. So, I find arc cosine of this angle, I can always find from x divided by square root of x square plus y square, I can always find the angle cosine of which is equal to this, right? Now, correspondingly, this 
would be uh, the sine of phi. So this will be cosine of phi, and this will be a sine of phi. And obviously, the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared is equal to radius of this unit circle, which is 1. Now, if my x and y are not positive, I'm just changing the angle. Let's say my x is still positive and my y is negative. So when uh, this is happening, I think I have to change to minus phi. So after I find basically arc cosine of absolute value of x, and if my x is still positive but y is negative, I will switch to minus f. Now if my x is negative and y is positive, I will switch to 180 degree minus, minus phi. And if both are negative, I'll switch to this angle, which is phi plus 150 uh, and 80. So there is an angle. For, from these two numbers, I can get an angle. So I can always say that the whole thing is equal to absolute value of z times cosine phi plus i sine phi, which is kind of similar to this one. It's just different angle. So this is for the vector, but vectors and um, complex numbers are in one-to-one -one correspondence. And this is for the complex number, which is basically the same. Now, by the way, if I will convert this complex number into a vector, its coordinates will be correspondingly x and y, and their representation in, in this format would be exactly this. It will be uh, absolute value of z plus times cosine phi plus i sine phi. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means that I can represent the multiplication not in terms of x and y and a and b, but instead, but in, in terms of L, alpha, absolute value of z, and phi. There is no difference. I mean, these are complex numbers, this complex numbers and this complex numbers. I'll just multiply them. So what it will be, it will be the following. z times a plus ib equals to L times absolute value of z times uh, cosine alpha cosine phi. Now, and I will put as a real number, uh, if I will multiply i sine by i, uh, but i sine, it will be i square, which is minus sine alpha sine phi. Okay. Uh, plus i times uh, cosine alpha sine phi, cosine alpha sine phi, and um, sine alpha cosine phi, sine alpha cosine phi equals L times z times. Now, don't you recognize it? Well, from trigonometry, this is the cosine of sum of two angles. So this would be cosine of alpha plus phi. And this would be the sine of alpha plus phi. Now, what's interesting is, so if vector AB, which is represented as a complex number this, multiplied by complex number this, which is represented in trigonometric form like this, the result would be this, which is what? A vector used to have a length L, now it will, it will have a length L times Z. So absolute value of Z, which is square root of X square plus Y square, is a factor which changes the length. And phi is the addition to the angle this vector makes with the x-axis. So we are rotating the vector by phi. So we have this new vector. 
or this new vector, whatever I was doing before. So this would be fine then. So again, our multiplication by a complex number has two functions. Number one, it's stretching or shrinking the length of the vector by factor uh, absolute value of z, which is square root of x squared plus y squared. So this is a real number. So this is the basically the stretch component. And if I have this angle phi, which represents basically this number in trigonometric form, then this phi would be additional angle, it will be a rotating angle. So my vector is stretching or shrinking by length and rotating by uh, phi. Where phi, as I was saying, is determined by these two numbers. Well, this is this is basically the end of it. Because now we have not only explained uh, from algebraic standpoint um, how the vector is multiplied by a complex number, which means you just turn this vector into its complex form and multiply two complex numbers and then go back to the vector form. Or you can actually say that multiplication of vector by complex number is a changing by some factor of the length of the vector and the factor is absolute value of this multiplier and a rotation of this vector by some angle defined again by x and y using this type of thing. This would be a cosine of angle and this would be a, a, this would be a sine of this angle. Okay, so that's, that's what it is. Times complex number means changing the length and uh, rotation. And obviously if um, you have y which is equal to zero, well that means that angle phi, well i is actually a sine of phi, right? So the angle phi would be zero, which means we don't really turn anything. So what's, what's important that the rule for complex numbers, in case we are talking about um, the real number, which is part of the space of complex numbers, where y is equal to zero, basically results in rotation by zero degrees, which means no rotation. And that corresponds to our previous understanding of what the multiplication by real number actually is. It's just stretching by absolute value of x, which is basically absolute value of x. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. I suggest you to um, read the notes for this lecture, so you go to unisor.com, um, which, by the way, is totally free. There are no advertisements uh, on the website. You go to Mass for uh, Mass Plus and the Problems uh, course, uh, take the part, click on the vectors, and this is Vectors 11 lecture. Okay, thanks very much and good luck.